Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. We're live at Strata in Santa Clara, California. This is Silicon Angle TV's continuous coverage of the Strata Conference. O'Reilly Media. O'Reilly Media is a great partner of ours, and uh, thanks to them for allowing us to be here. Uh, we've been going all week. Uh, this is day three for us. I'm here with Jeff Kelly, uh, Wikibon's lead big data analyst, and uh, we're here with Jack Norris, who's the VP of Marketing at MapR. Uh, Jack, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. Thanks Happy very much here. for coming on, and uh, you know, we've been going all week. You guys are a great sponsor of ours. Thank you for the, the support. We really appreciate it. Um, how's the show going for you? The show's been great. A uh, lot of attention, a lot of focus, a lot of discussion about Hadoop and big data. Yeah, so you guys getting a lot of traffic. I mean, it's, it's, I, yeah. hear, I hear there's 2,500 people here, up from 1,400 last year, so that's... Uh, yeah, we've had like five, six people deep in the, in the booth, so uh, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of interest. So it's interesting, you know, when we were here uh, last year, when you looked at the, the infrastructure and the competitive landscape, there, it, there wasn't a lot going on. And in, in just a very short time, that's completely changed. Uh, yeah. And you guys have, you know, had your hand in that. <laughs> So, so that's good. Competition is a good thing, right? Um, and uh, and obviously customers want choice. But uh, so we want to talk about that a little bit. We want to okay. talk about MapR, uh, the kind of problems you're solving. So why don't we start there? What what is MapR all about? And you've got your own distribution of of, of, of enterprise Hadoop. You're making Hadoop enterprise ready. Uh, let's start there. Okay. Um, yeah. The, uh, I mean, we invested heavily in, in creating an alternative distribution, uh, one that took the best of the open source community with the best of the MapR innovations. And uh, really, it's, it's about uh, making Hadoop uh, more applicable, broader use cases, more mission critical support, you know, being able to sit in and work in a lights out data center environment. Okay, so. Um what was the problem that you set out to solve? Why, why, do, why do we need another distribution of Hadoop? Let me ask it that way. Get nice and close so that folks can hear you. So there, there are some uh, just big issues. Uh, Hadoop's not perfect? With, with, with Hadoop. Um, <laughs> uh, what are those issues? Let's talk about those. There's, let's, some, let's there's some ease of use issues. There's some de dependability issues. Uh, there's some, some performance. So you know, let's take those in order. Um, right now, if you look at some of the distributions, Apache Hadoop, um, great technology, but it requires a programmer, right? To get access to the data, it's through the Hadoop API. Uh, you can't really you know, see the data, so there's a lot of focus of, you know, what do I do once the data's in there? Um, opening that up, providing a full file-based uh, access, right? So I can look at it and treat it like enterprise storage, see the data, use my standard tools, standard commands. Uh, you know, drag and drop from a file browser. You can do that with MapR. You can't do that with other distributions. So, for instance, you talk about mounting HDFS as uh, NFS. Correct. As an example. Correct. Yeah. Um, and everybody and then, knows how to do and that. And then just the underlying storage services, the fact that it's append only instead of full random read-write, uh, you know, causes some, some issues. So, you know, that's some of the, the ease of use features. There's a whole lot we could discuss there. Big picture for reliability, dependability is there's a single point of failure, multiple single points of failure within Hadoop, so you risk data loss. So people have looked at Hadoop traditionally as this batch-oriented scratch pad, right? Uh, we were out to solve that, right? We want to make sure that you can use it for mission-critical data, that you don't have a risk of a data loss, that you've got full high availability, uh, you've got the, the full data protection in terms of snapshots and mirroring that you would expect with enterprise uh, products. So take us back to when you guys were you know, thinking about doing this. I'm not even sure you were at the company at the time, but you, you're, the DNA was there and you're familiar with it. So you guys saw this big data movement, you saw this Hadoop movement, yep. and you said, okay, this is cool, it's going to be big, um, and it's going to take a long time for the community to fix all these problems. We can fix them now, let's go do that. Is that the general discussion? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think the uh, what's different about this, this is the first open source uh, package, the first open source project that's created a market. If you look at the other open source, uh, you know, Linux, uh, MySQL, et cetera, it was really late in the life cycle of a product. Everyone knew what the features were. It was about you know giving an alternative choice. Yeah, better here, Unix. Here, here the focus is on innovation, uh -huh. and uh, our founders. Uh, 
you know, have deep enterprise uh, background or CTO, was at Google in charge of big table, understands MapReduce at scale, uh, spent time as chief software architect at Spinnaker, which was kind of the fastest clustered NAS on, on the planet. So recognize that the underlying, you know, layers of Hadoop needed some re-architecture and uh, needed some deep investment and to do that effectively and do that quickly required a whole lot of focus and we thought that was the best way to, to go to market. And talk about the early validation from customers. Obviously you guys didn't just do this in a vacuum I presume, so you went out and you talked to some customers. You had hundreds and, of conversations and, and, with customers while we were in stealth and, mode. And we were probably the loudest stealth and the, mode and company. And the heads were nodding and I mean, what were they telling you at the time? Yeah, please go do this. Uh, the, what we address weren't secrets. Right? There have been JIRAs for open for four or five years on, on these issues. Yeah, but at the same time, Jack, you've got this, um, you've got this purist community out there that says, oh, I don't want to rip out HDFS. You know, I, I want it to, to, to be pure. What you, would you say to those guys? You just say, okay, thank you. We, we understand you're not a prospect and no, just I think, move on. I, and I think that you know, Hadoop has a huge amount of momentum. And I think a lot of that momentum is that there isn't any risk to adopting Hadoop, right? It's not like the fractured NoSQL market where there's 122 different entrants, which one's going to win? Hadoop's got the, the ecosystem. So when you say pure, it's about the APIs. It's about making sure that if I create a MapReduce job, it's going to run in Apache, it's going to run in MapR, it's going to run on the other distributions. That's where I think the, the heat and the focus is. Now, to do that, you also have to have innovation occurring up and down the stack that, uh, that provides choice and alternatives for, for customers. So when I'm talking about purists, I, I, don't, I, I agree with you. Uh, the whole lock-in thing, which is you know, the, no. the elephant in the room here. People will worry about lock-in. Was that, I think, was that a pun intended, elephant yeah, in the room? Uh, no, no, but good one, good catch. But, so, but you're basically saying, hey, we're, we're no more locked-in than Cloudera, right? I mean, they've got a, a, their own version of... of Actually, uh, I, th I think we're less because it's so easy to get data in and out with our NFS. That, okay. Uh, it's probably less locked. So, so, and I want to come back to that. But so, for instance, many when I when I say purists, I mean some users and ISV, some guys we've had on here. We had Abby Meta from Traseda on the other day, and mm -hmm. for instance, he's one to say, ah, I just don't have time to mess with that stuff and figure out all that API integration. I mean, there are people out there that yeah. just don't want to go that route. Okay, but but you're saying, I'm, I'm inferring, there's plenty who do. Right. And, the, and, and, Talk about that. And by the API route, I want to make sure I understand yeah, so what you're saying. Yeah, so you talked about, hey, it's all about the API integration. It's not about no, no, you know, it, whether or not it's you're not the, it, It's about the APIs being consistent, 100% compatible, right? So if I you know, write a program that's, that's going after HDFS and the HDFS API, I want to make sure that'll run on other distributions, okay, right? So that's, and, that's and, our... And, and that's your promise? Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, now... Where I was going with this was, that, that, again, there are some purists who say, well, I just don't want to mess with all that. Now, I'll, let's talk about what that means to mess with all that. So Comscore was a big high profile um, case study for you guys. Yes. Yep. Uh, they, they were Cloudera customer. Um, they basically, in my understanding is a couple of days, migrated from Cloudera to MapR. Yep. Um, and the impetus was, well, let's talk about that. Why'd they do that? Uh, performance, uh, data protection, ease of use. Um, license issues. There were some license issues there as well, right? The the your your maintenance pricing was more attractive. Is that true? Or I don't. I, I think I it was read more, that, mainly about price performance and and uh, reliability. And you know, they tested our stuff. It worked real well in a test environment. They put it in production environment. Didn't actually tell all their users. They had one uh, one of the guys debugged the software for a half a day because something was wrong. It finished so quickly. Uh, so, so, so it took them a couple days to migrate, and then boom, they were yeah, done. Yeah, boom, and they've, uh, they Move handle about 30 one. billion uh, objects a day. Uh, so they're, you know, the, the use of that, uh, really high performance, uh, support for, for streaming data flows. Uh, you know, they're talking about, they're doing forecasts and insights into web behavior, and, uh, you know, they will, the, the earlier they can do that, uh, the better off they are, so. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, so, so talk about the implications of, of your approach in, in terms of the customer base. Um, so I, I'm, I'm imagining that your customers are more perhaps advanced than a lot of your typical Hadoop users who are just getting started, uh, tinkering with Hadoop. Uh, is it fair to say you know, your customers know what they want and they want performance and they want it now? Uh, and they're a little more advanced than perhaps 
some of the typical yeah, early adopters? I mean, we've, got, uh, we've got people who go to our website and download the free version, and you know, some of them are just starting off and, and getting used to Hadoop. Um, but we did specifically target those very experienced Hadoop users right. that uh, you know were kind of uh, you know stubbing their toes on mm -hmm. on the issues, and so they're very receptive to the message of. We've made it faster. We've made it more reliable. You know, we've we've added a lot of ease of use to the uh, to the Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I found this. Let me interrupt. Uh, go back to what I was saying before. Is I sure. found this comment that I found online from Mike Brown, Comscore yes. CEO. I presume you know. He said Comscore's map bar direct access NFS feature, which exposes Hadoop distributed file system data as NFS files, can then be easily mounted, modified, or overwritten. So that's a data access. Yeah. You know, simplification. He also said we could capitalize on the purchase of Map R with an annual maintenance charge versus a yearly cost per node. NFS allowed our enterprise systems to easily access the data in the cluster. So does that make sense to you? That that enterprise of that annual maintenance charge versus yearly cost per node? I didn't get that. Oh, I think you're talking about economic advantage yeah, there for I Map think, R that uh, I didn't understand. Some some organizations prefer to do a perpetual license. Uh, versus a subscription model. That's that's oh. basically what he's referring to. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, so. the, the traditional way of licensing software. <laughs> and, okay. and that that and you guys do either. It basically reinforces the fact that we've really invested and have kind of a, a product, uh, you know, orientation rather than just services on top of mm -hmm. of some open source. Yeah. Okay. So you go in, you license it, and then. Yep. Perpetual license. And then you can also start with the free edition that does all the performance, NFS support. Kick the, the tires before you, before you buy it. Sorry, sorry, Jeff. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no problem at all. Go ahead. Uh, so you another you know, topic uh, of, of a lot of interest is security. Uh, making yep. Hadoop Enterprise ready, one of the pillars there is security. Um, uh, making sure uh, access controls, for instance, making sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, talk about how you guys approach that and, and maybe how you differentiate uh, from some of the other vendors out there or the other So we've got uh, full Kerberos support. We link into enterprise standards uh, for mm -hmm. access, LDAP, et cetera. Uh, we leverage the Linux PAM security. Uh, and we also provide volume control. So you know, right now in Hadoop, in, in Apache Hadoop, other distributions, you put policies at the file level or the entire cluster. Mm -hmm. And we see many organizations having separate physical clusters because of that limitation. Right. And we provide volume, uh, so you can define a volume, and in that volume, control access, control administrative privileges, data protection class, and you know, in a sense, kind of segregate that content, and that provides a lot of uh, uh, a lot of control and a lot more, you know, security and protection and separation of data. Jack, is that scenario, uh, the Comscore scenario, uh, common, uh, where somebody's you know moving off an existing? Uh, distribution onto MapR, or is, or are you more going going seeing demand from new customers that are saying, hey, what's this big data thing? I really want to get into it. How does it shake out there? Um, right now, there's just huge pent up demand uh, for for these features, and we're seeing a lot of people that have run on other distributions switch to MapR. A little bit of everything. How about um, can you talk a little bit about your your channel? You go to market strategy, maybe even some of your ecosystem and partnerships in the little sure. time that we have. Sure. Left? Uh, so uh, EMC uh, is a big partner. The EMC Green Plum MR edition is basically uh, MapR. Uh, you can start with any of our editions and upgrade to, to that Green Plum with just a license key. Uh, that gives us worldwide service and support. It's been a great partnership. Going well. Um, we hear a lot of proof of concepts out there for. for yeah, for and that. then it just hit the news uh, news today about uh, EMC's distribution MR distribution being available with uh, UCS Cisco's UCS gear. Right. So now that's further expanded the uh, uh, the footprint that we have with MapR. Okay, so you have the EMC relationship. Anything else that you can share with us? Uh, we have other announcements uh, coming out. And Nothing uh, you want to pre-announce in the cube? <laughs> <show those. laughs> uh, Oops, did I let that slip? And you're, and you're uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's live, so be careful. <laughs> um, and so in terms of your, your channel strategy, you guys mostly selling uh, direct, indirect, combination? Uh, it's... It, it, it's a kind of an indirect model through these uh, these large partners um, with a direct assist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys come in and help evangelize. Yep. And yep. Excellent. All right. Uh, do you have anything else before we got a got a roll here? Sure. Just uh, wonder if you could talk a little bit about. Um, you mentioned the EMC Greenplum. So uh, there's a lot of talk about the uh, data warehouse market. The 
uh, MPP data warehouses yeah, versus yeah, yeah. Uh, Hadoop. Um, based on that relationship, I'm assuming MapR thinks, well, they're certainly complementary. Yes. Uh, can you just touch on that? And you know, as opposed to some who think, well, Hadoop's going to be the platform where we can put all. Well, the data. It, it, there's just, I mean, if you look at the typical organization, they're just <coughs> really trying to get their <coughs> excuse me, their arms around a lot of this machine-generated content, uh, this you know unstructured data that's just growing like wildfire. So there's a lot of Hadoop-specific use cases that are being um, rolled out. Uh, they're also kind of data lakes, data oceans, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, uh, large pools where that information is then being extracted and loaded into data warehouses mm -hmm. for further analysis. And I think the big pivot there is if it's well understood what the issue is, you define the schema, then there's a whole host of, of data warehouse applications out there uh, that can be deployed, but there's many things where you don't really understand that yet. Having it in Hadoop where you don't need to define the schema mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a big value. Okay. All right, Jack, I'm sorry we have to go. We're running a couple minutes behind. Um, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. Hey, Great story, you. good luck with everything, and uh, sounds like things are really going well, and market's yeah. he heating up, and uh, you're in the right place at the right time. So. Uh, Thank you again, uh, thank you to Jeff, and uh, we'll be right back, uh, everybody, to the Strata Conference live in Santa Clara, California, right after this word from our sponsors.